Yes, I'm uh, Charles Woodward from VTT. Can you show the next? Uh, I have this. Uh, I'm actually the rare people who are using the official uh, PowerPoint uh, template. But anyhow, I'm Charles Woodward from VTT. Uh, VTT is uh, Technical Research Center of Finland. It's the third biggest uh, uh, research center in Europe and the biggest in Northern Europe with some 2,300 employees. We started with AR uh, already 15 years ago, and today we have a team of uh, 23 people working on computer vision, AR, and related applications. Uh, additionally, we have uh, people working on wearables and uh, uh, industrial applications and so on. But uh, today I concentrate on, on the EAC, Field Architecture Engineering Construction. I'll uh, actually explain our background, what we did in the past, also what we are up to at the moment and how we see the future. So just very quickly, uh, we were already 12 years ago, I think the first in the world to display uh, complex building models in AR view on mobile device, a PDA at the time. As you see on the top pictures, we were using uh, markers and a client server system to do that. Uh, in 2007, we were again the first in the world or among the first to employ Google Earth and GPS for architectural visualization. Nowadays that seems trivial, but uh, eight years ago uh, we were among the first to do that. And then in 2010, we were uh, again pioneering with markerless tracking, SLAM kind of uh, feature-based uh, tracking to visualize uh, 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 oil refinery model you see us on the bottom. Now closer to today, we have been employing these in various uh, commercial projects with uh, regular customers. Uh, in these examples, uh, the actual city planning councils are making decisions of uh, planned hotel or uh, high-rise buildings in uh, Rasebori town in uh, Finland and here, some very high-class uh, Finnish uh, politicians are viewing uh, the plans on, on tablet devices. We have been, uh, after that, also uh, taking these methods to not just the decision makers, but to ordinary citizens. Like uh, on the right, you see some farmers up northern, in northern Finland viewing wind generator park plans that will affect their neighborhood. So anyone in the area could participate on a bus tour and, and uh, pick any location where they want, wanted to see how the wind generator will uh, affect the environment. Uh, in this case also notice we are masking the wind generators with the skyline as well as foreground objects. And without this kind of um, uh, technologies as well as extreme accuracy, uh, this application would be actually quite useless. We've been uh, also uh, employing uh, the same uh, system with uh, alternative plans. So in a case uh, late last year, we had a bunch of some 30 citizens who could then evaluate four alternative plans of a hospital that was being planned in their neighborhood. We have also been working with uh, real estate marketing. These are pictures uh, of some uh, very expensive houses being planned uh, close to Helsinki at the seaside. Again, you see, for example, masking of uh, foreground. Uh, the shape of the ground and rocks uh, are used to mask the uh, buildings. Actually, if you could, could click on this image, we could see a brief video. So this is what the customers would see from uh, the pier uh, next to the building. So actually, they are planning also to take the customers on a boat ride to, to uh, see, see the uh, scene from, from the sea. Okay, so escape this one and we continue. So those were architectural applications. Then 
we go to the C letter, which is construction. And in 2010, we uh, were working with the Skanska head offices uh, in Helsinki. And on the, on the right, you see uh, at the top, uh, that's actually a photograph of half a built building. Uh, and in the middle, uh, we have the augmented reality view. Uh, and as you can see, it uh, looks uh, close enough so that we could verify that the AR view really gives the uh, correct uh, impression of the building. But moreover, on the left here, we took the system, mobile system to the construction site. And there the uh, workers, well, it was a pilot uh, case, but they could uh, select a time of, uh, let's say, week or day. So we had a 4D implemented with the building information models, and they could see what should be installed next week or what should be there already, select different kind of parts and uh, elements to be built. And again, we were the first in the world to do that. Today we are continuing with the same application with uh, so-called uh, lean construction methods so that the workers could see the uh, weekly tasks on, on their lists augmented at the construction site. Then if we go to the E letter, which is the engineering, we are applying the methods also indoor applications, like in maintenance. In this case, we had a project for uh, integrating the building information model together with the facility man management system to pro provide an AR view to, to the mobile worker. So if you, if you click on the top image, hello there. Can you click on the top image there? So here you see a maintenance um, scenario. The maintenance worker first is able to view the uh, site on a uh, map. And there you also saw the uh, part of the building as the building information model aligned with the floor, floor plan. And here using uh, hybrid uh, sensor-based tracking and point cloud-based tracking, the user sees that there's some problem with the ventilation. So you can click on, on uh, pipes behind the walls and obtain information about those parts. And here's um, in the 3D view, we see that actually the problem seems to be in the uh, intake of the ventilation. And then the user is not able to see the problem, but also make a report so he can start typing a report that this, is, uh, this and this is the problem. And now we need to do this and that. So then if you abort this video, please. Uh, just as uh, related application, we are also applying these methods for tourist applications. Like on the left, you see uh, in the middle picture, we see how the city of Turku looks like today. And on the top, we augment the historical building that used to be there. Um, here we do similar kind of things with historical photos of Helsinki. So you actually see here that the Zeppelin visited Helsinki in, in the early 1900s. And as my last slide, I, I note that the older tracking that we have is based on uh, our own 3D point cloud based uh, tracking technology, which is also licensed by Inglobe Technologies in it from Italy. And as well, we are licensing the technology to Nokia. And just to conclude, can you click on the left uh, top image? And this uh, sort of shows the coolest uh, 3D tracking available. Uh, at the moment. Actually, the video is two years old, so we have improved from this uh, even. So uh, this is a point of interest application. 
So we are displaying information of what uh, what village we have at the Senate Square in Helsinki. And here we have the what's the church then? Okay, it's Helsinki the Cathedral. As you see, the, ac the uh, tracking is very accurate and very, very fast. But now comes the interesting part. The user starts to walk up the steps. And without any sensor fusion or anything just based on camera uh, tracking, we are able to keep the tracking um, working all the time. OK, you can quit this now and I thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. So it looks like we have a question up here. If you want to go ahead and now get set up on screen. Thanks. Um, I had a question in terms of the application. You, um, the one where you had the guy walking into the building and find the the problem within the you know air cut. Uh, yeah. Um, so it seems that the system already knows, like some somewhere the data must have come from, not only for all the 3D model, but also for the actual, for the current state and the fact that the problem is already there. So then why do you need to send out, so that actually seems to be the, the, the very difficult part here. You actually need to instrument all of your, you know, everything that can go wrong with sensors that can actually report. If you already have that in place, why does that guy go in just to see it and then to like type it up that here's a problem? It seems like the system knew that already. Um, I'm not actually sure if I understand the question right, but this was uh, actually not a real maintenance worker. So we had a research project where we interviewed uh, four different gr groups of maintenance workers and we identified some uh, 20 different cases where they could use mobile AR and, and then took uh, five, five of them into, into uh, real uh, use. So this case was actually defined by the users, not by the researchers. I guess then I'm wondering, I mean, you, you must. So the, the problem uh, they wanted to solve is that they have, uh, they have a problem somewhere like in this case in the lobby, but the actual reason for the problem is maybe at the other side of the building even. Uh, so this was one scenario they wanted to, to try out on the mobile device. But you need an extremely smart sensor building to, to supply that kind of information in real time. Well, we have the facility management systems. We have building automation systems. And we have service books so, uh, where the intelligence is. So uh, actually, if we align these things with the building information model, the building information model sort of becomes a, frame, becomes a framework where you can in, uh, in insert any kind of information and hook any kind of systems. And it's not only the original building elements, but you can attach a monitor or a loudspeaker or whatever in the same 3D coordinate system. Like actually in the remaining of the video, it would have been the case. But a good, good question anyhow. Yeah, um, my question is something related similarly. Um, did you have any problem loading BIM such large uh, heavy models on tablets or uh, such mobile devices? And how did you come across it? Because that's a issue that we are as a company are also facing it. Uh, yes. Um, not with any other case, but in the Skanska building model, we had to split it into half. We were using the TNO's uh, beam uh, uh, server, and that had a limit of some 20 megabytes, and, and that was a limit, yeah. yeah so so it, uh, we, in, we had a practical limit, but not a theoretical limit, yes. Okay, thank you. Great question, thank you. Thank you.